Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a trigonometric equation for sine of 2x. We're given sine cubed x plus cosine cubed x is equal to square root of 2 over 2 and we are going to be finding the value of sine 2x. Okay, so this expression basically is a sum of two cubes, so I'm going to be using the formula a cubed plus b cubed which is equal to a plus b multiplied by a squared minus a b plus b squared. So that's what I'm going to use to factor the original expression. So the first factor is going to be sine x plus cosine x. The second factor is going to be sine squared x minus sine x cosine x plus cosine squared x. And as you know, this is equal to square root of 2 divided by 2. Now, at this point, Notice that sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. So I can write my expression as sine x plus cosine x multiplied by 1 minus sine x cosine x. Now here we do have the sum of sine and cosine and we do have the product. And obviously they are related through the Pythagorean theorem or the formula. So for that purpose, I'll take sine x plus cosine x and I want to call that something. Let's call that y. And then I would like to square both sides. Let's go ahead and square both sides here. We get sine squared x plus cosine squared x. We can write it either way. Plus 2 sine x cosine x equals y squared. And at this point, we know that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So this becomes 1 plus 2 sine x cosine x equals y squared and if you subtract 1 and divide by 2 from here we get sine x times cosine x in terms of y and that becomes y squared minus 1 divided by 2. So since we're looking for sine of 2x in the original expression we can just you know multiply both sides by 2 so sine 2x from double angle formula is equal to 2 sine x cosine x and that would equal y squared minus 1 y squared minus 1 in terms of y. And y is equal to sine x plus cosine x. Okay, so this means that if we're able to find sine x plus cosine x, then we can easily find sine of 2x from there. Okay, now the next step is going to be substituting everything into the factored form. So here's my factored form, and I would like to replace sine x plus cosine x with y, and then sine squared plus cosine squared. So here's the equation that I'm using basically at this point. I replace sine x plus cosine x with y and 1 minus, the other factor is going to be 1 minus sine x cosine x and that can be written as y squared minus 1 over 2. And as you know, this is equal to square root of 2 divided by 2. So this is my equation in a single variable, but guess what? This is not going to be quadratic, this is going to be cubic. So we're going to be solving a cubic equation but it's fun to solve and it's not too hard. At this point, if you want, you can multiply both sides by 2, and that's going to give you y times 2 minus y squared minus 1 equals square root of 2. And then if you distribute the y and distribute the negative as well, so maybe distribute the negative first. So we can kind of write this as, I think, instead of going through all these steps. So since this is going to be 2 minus negative 1, that's going to be a 3, so we can write this as 3 minus y squared and then let's go ahead and distribute. We get 3y minus y cubed equals square root of 2. Let's put everything on the same side, on the right hand side. y cubed minus 3y plus square root of 2 is equal to 0. Now, you may or may not know that uh, square root of 2 is a solution for this. So you can kind of factor this by manipulating a little bit. Let me show you how you can do that. And you could also do the following. I think we've done a similar problem before. You can replace y with something like x root 2 and then try to find the x value because that's going to be easier to find. Anyways, uh, let's do the following. I'm going to split up the negative 3y into negative 2y minus y. And this allows me to factor by grouping. And when I do, I get a common factor. Shouldn't be too hard to see, in my opinion. But this is uh, factorable by difference of two squares, y plus root 2 multiplied by y minus root 2. And then this is minus 1 times y minus root 2. Okay. Now we do have a common factor, y minus root 2. We can take that out. 
that also shows that y equals square root of 2 is a solution. And then the other uh, factors are going to give us y squared plus square root of 2y minus 1 equals 0. Now, as you can see from here, uh, we have a linear factor and a quadratic factor. Linear factor is easy to solve, obviously, y equals root 2. And from here, remember our goal was to find sine of 2x, and sine of 2x is equal to y squared minus 1. Okay, so I can basically just replace y with what it is and then find sine 2x from here. Let's go ahead and do that. Since y is equal to uh, root 2 and sine x can be written as y squared minus 1, y squared will be 2, 2 minus 1 would be 1. So from here, we get that sine of 2x is equal to 1. Great. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other value. Of course, other values, I should say, because this is a quadratic equation. If you solve this using the quadratic formula, you're going to get negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus, but that's going to be negated by the negative 1, plus 4 times 1, that's going to be a 4, divided by 2a. And this is going to become negative 2 plus minus the square root of 6 divided by 2. Now, you probably noticed that uh, negative root 2 minus root 6 divided by 2. Now, notice that uh, root 6 is greater than root 2, and negative root, six, uh, negative root 6 is less than negative root 2. Therefore, uh, this number is actually less than negative root 2. Now, why am I comparing it to uh, negative root 2? Because um, the maximum and the minimum values of, you know, uh, an expression. Uh, let me go back here. So, y was sine x plus cosine x. Remember, we did that here. So, since uh, y equals sine x plus cosine x, we have, uh, and the proof is kind of long, so I'm not going to do that here, but let me say that a sine x plus b cosine x needs to be between the square root of a squared plus b squared and the opposite of that. So those are kind of like the minimum and maximum values for a sine x plus b cosine x. For, for this one, it will be root 2 and negative root 2. But since one of the values that we get from here is out, out of bounds, we're not going to take that. So the only acceptable y value from here is going to be negative root 2 plus root 6 divided by 2, which I, you can also write as root 6 minus root 2 over 2. So we have one acceptable value. We had the other value. So we got two values for y so far. That means that this is going to give us the following. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Since sine of 2x can be written as y squared minus 1, I'm going to go ahead and take this expression, square it, and subtract 1 from it. And when you do the operation, you are supposed to be getting 1 minus root 2 for that one. We can kind of work it out if you want. Let's go ahead and do it. Uh, if you square this expression right here, uh, you're going to get um, 8 minus, oopsies, okay, 8 minus 2 root 12, which can be written as 4 root 3, divided by 4 minus 1. And then that can be written as if you divide everything by 4, you're going to get 2 minus root 3 minus 1, and that can be written as 1 minus root 3. So basically, we got two values for sine 2x, 1 minus root 3, and the other value is sine 2x equals, uh, I think we got that here, there we go, sine x, sine 2x is equal to 1. So sine 2x can be 1 minus root 3 or 1. But are both of these values uh, valid, like do they satisfy the original equation? That is something that needs to be checked. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know what you think. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.